these contests started here in Brisbane in 1908. So they've been doing this for quite some time. Australia have won 95 of the 130 test matches played. And of course that is a domination, isn't it? A domination supreme. But the Kiwis in the last decade, since 05, have won the Tri-Nations, then they won a World Cup in 08, and then they've put four nations back to back in 2010 and 2014. And as you can see, the Kiwis are about to come out to be greeted by a big crowd. I wouldn't say that it's anywhere near capacity, but it's quite a sizable crowd waiting for the Kiwis as they make their way out. The flags then, as I said, of New Zealand and Australia and the New Zealand lady side, the Ferns. Guard of, guard of honour there for Simon Mannering as he takes his team out. Mannering as captain, plays his 41st test match today and captains for the 11th time. Just the four changes for them, the New Zealanders, from the November final in Wellington. Faray, Blair, Brown and Talmalolo replaced by Tuovasa Shek. His first game in the one shirt for New Zealand, Matalino, Lulawai and Moa. Johnson, of course they need him to be at his best as he was in Wellington if they're to win this match today. So the Australian side, here they are. Jill Roos, the Australian ladies team, which was successful earlier. Guard of honour for the Kangaroos as they come out with eight changes to the team beaten in the Four Nations final. Among them, of course, Thurston, Miles, Scott and Tarmow. And four players on debut in this match today. Jonathan Thurston, one of three golden boot winners in the Australian side. In fact, Jonathan's got a pair of boots, making up the four golden boots with Greg and Cameron, Greg Ingalls and Cameron Smith, the others. The James Tarmo and the Cameron Smith, of course, leading this side for the 20th time. You heard Ken Sutcliffe pointing out that he becomes the sixth captain only to have captained his country on 20 occasions or more. So the national anthems of both nations in just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the Australian and New Zealand national anthems to be performed this afternoon by Adrian Ladoni, who's about to star in the Gold Coast Arts Centre's production of Miss Saigon, and New Zealand-born Brisbane local, Russ Walker. Our land abounds in nature. 
nature's gifts of beauty rich and rare in history's page let every stage advance australia fair in joyful strains then let us sing Wow, that is called holding a note. Beautiful renditions then of the anthems of New Zealand and Australia. Well, that Four Nations final win that I spoke about for these lads in the, the black and white certainly was an historic night down in Wellington, which reminds me that this is the first daylight test between these two countries since 1978. But why was it historic? It was the first time on home soil that they'd won a major tournament first time undefeated in a major event and first time beating Australia in consecutive years since 1953. So there was a 61 year drought since they had actually beaten Australia in consecutive test matches. So that's the reason the celebration was so high at uh, Westpac Stadium, I think it is down in Wellington. The Harker, that uh, is coming up for you in just a matter of seconds. The TVs. Coming to get. Some, that's the best one. Yeah, he's the leader of the band, isn't he, Isaac Luke? He was missing uh, one of his first lieutenants, though. Adam Blair not there, but look at that. Peter Hicko, or Peter Hicko, and Kieran Foran back there to the top left-hand corner of the screen. Sam Fiday is one of six Indigenous players in the Australian run-on side today. That in itself is a record. There's been six before, but not in a run-on side. Sam Fiday playing his 28th test. He scored one try, I think, from memory. There's been a lean trot for Sam, really. Jonathan Thurston, one of many players in this side from about 10 that were missing when they lost the Four Nations in November of last year. Lula Wai is coming off the, the bench as deputy to Isaac Luke. New Zealand will run. Jared Sutton is in charge. New Zealand will run right, left running towards the Caxton Street end of the best rugby league stadium in Australia. Good. Uh, time to run, boys. So stand by for the start of the Anzac Test. It is underway. Greg Inglis the first to get a touch. And Simon Mannering leads the procession of defenders included in that bunch of people. It was Jesse Bromwich who celebrated his birthday today. Matalino goes in with Bromwich to make the second tackle. Together with the help there of Kevin Proctor, they go to Scott now. And Matt Scott brings it out to the 40 metre long. So Smith using his short side of Parker. Takes play up to the halfway line. Again, involved in the tackle was Jesse Bromwich. So in the first four tackles, Bromwich has been involved in three of the four. English was able to get rid of Hiku there. He'll play the ball just outside the 40 metre line. Tackled by Harris as uh, Aaron Woods 
fairly long chat there with Harris after the tackle. The ball goes down to Chiu Marcus Sheck. He tested him out early this afternoon. Is Chiu Marcus Sheck bound for New Zealand next year? Harris brings it out. The 25 away from the run line. The second live telecast of rugby league this afternoon for you people watching on the Nine Network and being relayed through NBN and uh, and Win across Australia. Carry then for Madalena. He'll play the ball seven metres his side of the halfway line. So from Luke, it's gone on. This is Bromwich, and he takes it hard up to Woods. The youngster in the front row for Australia is Matt Scott. They can make the tackle. Ball going down. Quite friendly there to Greg Inglis. And Inglis in his 34th test matches looking for a try to kill the all-time great try scorers Reg Gaznia, one of three players only in front of Inglis on the test try scoring list. And a try for Greg today would seem draw level with the great Puff the Magic Dragon. Play near the halfway line. Played there by Chambers, the 800 kangaroo and Parker. Celebrates a birthday next Tuesday, and he might celebrate a penalty here, will he? Yes, he does. Interference, mate. Well, the Australians will have noticed in their first attacking foray, Petahiku come racing up when Greg Inglis was looking to get involved out the back. Manu Vatavay was, was well back. It's a new look right side with Will Chambers and Josh Dugan. I think Cooper Cronk will fancy his chances down there right if they can catch Hiku out. So Cronk oh, taking the foot. Oh, 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 and Finn from Friday saw the head of Harris sat back on his shoulders. And Cameron Smith gives it on the inside to Alan Woods. And he played a handful of test matches. And Smith it is across the first game. Playing the ball a metre out from the New Zealand line. Australia pressing hard. Kronk got it on the thigh day. Tries to get rid of Foran. So he's put down there by Harris and by Bromwich. Smith, Thurston. Thurston goes short into Bird. He, he tries to pass, he does, but it's gone down to a Kiwi. Nightingale, I think, has got the ball. He has. Now it's Kenny Dow. Bringing it some... Five metres inside the 20 metre line. Zealand coming away from the Milton Road end of the ground. And hop into his approach. Plays the ball just outside 30, down the middle corridor. And again, Bromwich. He's been in everything in attack and in defence. A play. Certainly not a set has gone by, but he hasn't been involved at least a couple of times. Ingles then, coming out of the corner. The Kiwis backed up a very good defensive set down on their own line with a nice attacking one. And Sean Johnson and his street kick down into the corner. That's Michael Jennings now. Unusual to see him in the number four jersey. Cooper Cronk coming to the right. Chambers. It's cut down low by Hiku. Foran came in. Assist tackle. It's now Fido. And the fourth tackle gone for Australia. Woods off a short ball from Smith and their, their good metres. Down to the halfway line. Smith hits it with the left foot, sends it low down to Chiovasashek. And he looks at Nightingale, thinks, nah, probably not necessary to pass. I'll take them myself. And he's put down by Scott and Parker. Nightingale now. Around the midsection by Thayday, Woods up the top with Scott, blocking up the middle. Penalty goes New Zealand, Australia inside the 10. So the, the Kiwis will find the line. Keep your eye clear. That'll be a bit of a pressure release for the Kiwis, but fairly impressive. The Kiwis uh, have only had it for a couple of sets, yeah, but mate. patience really is standing out in their play at the moment. Obviously, yeah. not trying too much too soon, waiting till they yeah. get in good field position. Yeah. Sean yeah. Johnson. Man of the match in the final. They'll need another man of the match performance from the number seven, 
in this one today. Trucked up to the Australian 40 metre line. Players over on the eastern side. As Luke goes away to Matalino, who wasn't a member of that final side. Luke then goes back to Johnson. He gives the ball to Kenny Dow, running an inside passage up the middle. He's tackled 19 out from the line. And a penalty goes Henry, to the Kiwi. Got that arm. And uh, that's for interfering with the arm carrying the ball. So New Zealand, would they be tempted? Cameron Smith is the, the offender. Well, and they're going to take the two. We'll take a break and be back in a minute. breaking it down. It wouldn't have been intentional, but I thought you interfered with it, and that's why it came out. Yeah, OK. That's what I thought. Matt, it's got to be back 10, mate. Just the other side, about a metre from the line, boys. So we're back at Suncorp, and as has been the fashion, uh, probably more often than not in recent weeks, we've seen teams taking the two when it almost looks like a sure thing and sean johnson 19 out right in front and he's standing within the 10 meters that he's required to stand out but johnson is undeterred by that and so the kiwis take the first points two nil in favor of new zealand logie's red carpet tonight live from seven o'clock on the nine network while Sean Johnson was lining up that penalty kick at goal, both captains, Simon Mannering and Cameron Smith, had some words with the referee about some Time things that they were unhappy with in the early parts of this game, trying to put a little bit of pressure on the referee about the rough speed, the 10 metres and different things. But both were very vocal with the referee. High kick off by Smith. And Bromwich takes it back again. Probably the number one prop in the game these days, the Melbourne Storm player of the year last year, Jesse Bromwich. That's not a bad effort in a side that includes Crank and Slater and Smith. Here's four. Just outside the 30 metre line. Young manly player, 24 years old. Darren Lockyer on the sideline. Darren, good day. Yeah, the last set when the Kiwis got the penalty, the, the Aussies got a call for when Manu comes in off the wing. They're going to aim up and hit him on. Will Chambers was winding him up, so keep an eye on that. Johnson then goes to the air, pretty much up and down in the same spot, and Alex Johnson, Johnston takes it. Jesse. Young South Sydney winger on debut at test level, the same place that he debuted on Anzac Day last year for Souths against Brisbane. Yeah, I'd have a call if Marnie was coming looking for the football as well. That would be yours. That's in the words of Braveheart. First and for Woodsman to the halfway line. Madalino's the 10. You'll see plenty of him. Here's a penalty to Australia. And it's against Madalino and this fellow, Mannering for over persisting in the tackle and the last top, couple of times australia came down this end they looked to go to their left rather than come to their right and they looked a little disorganized for australian side which is very unusual Let's see if they can clean it up a little bit this time in favor of new zealand at the 10 minute mark in the first half postponed test from friday night scott is 19 out, that's where he is, down the middle. And Smith comes to the right of the ground with the dummy, and then he goes to the Melbourne teammate, then to Greg Ingalls, and he goes now to Chambers. There was plenty of Melbourne tied up in that rush down the right side, wasn't there? Ingalls now. Strong, Sido, decoy Woods, Smith, Thurston. Thurston on, they should have an overlap here now. Jennings, but... He slid across in defence beautifully, New Zealand. Johnson completing the tackle. Now for Thurston. He steps and beats Bromwich. Taken by Madalino. 
They're five out on five. From goal, he was hit in a tackle hard. And the ball goes over the dead ball line in the company of Chiuabasa Shek. Well, on the previous play of the ball, the Australians chased through expecting first and to grab a kick. But the Kiwis got up off their line very quickly and stopped it. On the next play of the ball, Cronk was looking for a crossfield kick. Watch, so they got up on first and cut him off very quickly. On the next one, he looks for a crossfield kick. In the end, just decides to kick it straight because he was under such pressure from Isaac Luke. It hit the padding and two of us, Shek, had Let's to run it short. dead. Good defence by the Kiwis. They didn't get their reward, though, because now they've got to kick it back to Australia. Johnson then, from under the bar, bounces three or four times and almost beats Dugan. Away he goes from the halfway at the 45 degree angle and then he runs into Madalino. Welcome. I'll just run across field and find the biggest one I can. <laughs> 33 metres out, down the middle for Matt Scott. Between the green and goal with pride in more recent times. Matthew Scott from Longreach. Now it's gone to Thurston, a couple of decoys. It's with Greg Inglis now. See, they're out of sorts. They're, they're really on tilt a little bit here in Australia. It's not very fluent at all. I thought they were going to get pinged there. That's what we saw the punctuation mark. Here's Woods. Good effort again by Aaron. Now Smith, who goes out for Cronk. Short into Thayde. He's going to get his second try. His second try at test football level. I think it's his 28th test. And the Australians did say by getting a big man onto a smaller man, he's a rugged defender, Kieran Foran, but Sam Thiday, all energy and desire here on the Harvey Norman replay, one-on-one, -on -one, burst his way through and then dives underneath Chiuabasa Shek to get the opening points. I mentioned earlier, as we say, welcome back to Suncorp, that Sam Fide is one of six Indigenous youngsters that are playing in this test match in the run-on side, just to get it absolutely correct. Six Indigenous players in the run-on side. That in itself is history, and it is Sam Fide's 28th test and his second try only. Here is John Thurston now taking the shot to Kinkin. Does that in Australia lead by... Six points to two at the 14th minute. I love this bloke as a player, Sam Thiday. He really plays with his body and his heart and puts it on the line there. That was just sheer determination to get across the line. And it showed the way Australia needs to go. They've sort of been going side to side looking for trick shots. And Sam Thiday said, just give me the ball. I'll run over this bloke and show you where to go. He's your man, Sam Thiday. Yeah, very well smart, close to the line too. Go, go, Willie! Retain the old thought, strike a blow, stay low. Possible to keep him out. The Indigenous reminds me that Arthur Beetson was the first Australian sports person to captain in any sport back in 1970. I've never heard that one before. Strike a blow, stay low. Close to the line, it always works. First and then, pushing through to Bird. And Bird is held by Proctor and Kenny Dow. Almost on the halfway line then, the Kangaroos. Parker. Takes it up towards the 40 metre line. So 6-2 in favour of Australia. With a quarter of an hour gone. Try for Sam Friday, converted by Jonathan Thurston. And Sean Johnson, a penalty goal for New Zealand, was the first of the day. And Sam Muller takes his trunk out and Vatavay. Takes the, the bomb down near his own line. Looking for the, the 
put pressure on the kickers looking for late, high, or dangerous. And I doubt that Luke or Sam Moa, in the two instances I'm thinking of, infringe on any of those counts. He can't stop. He can't hit the man, the kicker, if he's in the air. And they haven't done. He's bounced up both times, Cooper Cronk. Jason Mighty going to take advantage of no markers to pick up some comfortable metres. It's the other thing to be said, and it's a, it's a, it's a compliment to Cooper Cronk that he doesn't stay down and, and look for investigation by the, the men upstairs. Ball's gone dead down at the Taxton Street end. Just let me explain what Wally Lewis is talking about, stay low. What's his bang? A lot of players get held up because they won't leave with their head. What's the courage here to dig in, bang, in between the legs and get it down? That's what Wally's talking about, stay low, to get it done. Very few players will lead with their head in that situation. Only the tough ones. That's why a lot get held up over the line. But he's got the courage, Sam Thayday. It's ready now. Bringing it back towards halfway with Scott. In fact, Miles is out there now. That was him. Mounts Thurston. And he fires a ball out to Johnston. Youngster brought down. Just as maybe he was thinking about a four-pointer in green and gold. Away it comes to Kronk again now. Over to Chambers. And Chambers puts a, a kick in behind Vatave. He's going to be grassed in goal. And the weight on the kick was perfect. Yeah, it's nice and really smart thinking there from Chambers. Everyone in the league knows if you can find a grubber kick in behind Manu, Vatuve, he's got a turning circle like the Queen Mary. It takes him a long time to turn around and get back there and by the time he gets it, he gets caught in the end goal and Chambers heads up play there. He knew he could get it in behind him and he's forced the line dropout. Yeah. And this bit of domination for Australia has come from a, a bit of fortune they had when the kick from Cooper Cronk hit the the paddy and forced a line drop it. That was going way dead. But the Australians good enough to take advantage, although that bouncing ball beats them all ends up and Nate Miles picks it up on his own side of halfway. He runs into the defence offered by Harris and Bromwich. Now for Woods. Woods running repairs for Michael Jennings over on the left side of the of the stadium. Smith goes for a little first into England's intercepted by Nightingale, but quick reflexes by Jennings cut down the, the Dragons winger. Well, Nightingale was just sweating on that, and I think I think Inglis wanted to dummy, but some for some reason just threw it, hit him right in the bread basket. It's a complete reversal of fortunes, Gus. Every other time they've gone that side, the Kiwi defence has been backing off. That was the one time that they've gone for it. It's Moa. Almost a quarter of the game gone. 6-2 in favour of Australia. And Simon Mannery. Playing the ball in the middle on the Australian 30. It's with Johnson. That's a ricochet off Thurston that has gone over the touchline. And it's a chance to have an attempt, so it'll be a New Zealand feed. Go, okay, Bush, we're going for a shortcut. Set him first. Yeah, it's an interesting play with by him, Thurston. Hold with him. As to whether or not he thought he could charge it down and get it back, but outside leg up, Sam. Darren Lockie up. Sam. Sam. Yeah, we see James Tamau about to come on. His wife's due with their second baby Wednesday, but with the oh, impending great. birth being at any point, he's actually got a limousine here at the ground today. And when the, this game is completed, he'll be straight into that limo and off to the airport to head back to Townsville. Well, I hope they don't get it mixed up with Ray Warren's limousine, or we could end up at the hospital. We might end up with the child, but. the try just clear the touching goal line mate so jared sutton just checking with the video referee but he's quite happy that it's a try scored by manu vatave yeah, they do a great job here in new zealand to create an overlap getting around the outside of will chambers he does stumble when he gets ankle tapped and his feet go up in the air his body's inside the line no problem with that at all it is a common sight seeing manu vatave put the football down over the try line. Six all.
That should be enough. This man is the lone survivor from the 2005 Tri-Nations win by New Zealand. And it's a try for Manu Vatave. Most inappropriate time to score a try, wasn't it? Just when you come up with a classic. It's a special year for Manu Vatave in more ways than one. I celebrated what was it, uh, 200 games just recently, and of course he broke Nigel Vanganar's test try scoring record uh, last November, of course, uh, down in Wellington. Wonderful try. Tuovasa Shek played his part, his first time in the number one jumper, the black and white number one. Sean Johnson from the touchline, pretty much at the junction of the 20, kicking from the western side. It's all, and he's brought it around too much. So they're locked up at 6-6 six, six after 21 minutes, Darren Lockyer. Yeah, with any team that Manu plays in, they feed off his energy and they feed off his runs. But he obviously had to do a lot to still score that try from that point. He's had a couple of really nice touches early in this game. That's a dangerous sign for the Kangaroos. Darren, I, I just wanted to ask you a question about this, this maternity issue that we've got with Can James Tama. Was she due last Wednesday or next Wednesday? That's the first thing. Uh, last Wednesday. So it's that, that means your limo has to go second, Rebs. Yeah, I was just going to say, I, I, the, the try was rather inappropriate. I, I was on my way to a maternity ward. Wondering what James Tamo was doing with me and not Gus Gould. Here's Martin Tapao now, 20 metres out from the New Zealand line as he goes out. Harris now. Just inside, or not now, he's right on the 30 metre line. Play coming down the left side as they go back to the centre for Moa. Nuggety little front row forward. My goodness, he's tough. Johnson links it now to a wide forward in Proctor. He'll play it to Sean Kenny Dow. Right on the halfway line. Out to power. And he packs plenty of power, doesn't he? Johnson gives it back to Mannering. All very fancy stuff, but I don't know that they were reading off the same page. Zach goes over, and Johnson is taken by Smith. And it goes into Johnston's corner. My oh, goodness, that was difficult for the youngster. He's only 20. First test match. And Greg Inglis got rid of his South Sydney teammate, Isaac Luke. See you at Redfern. Yes. Now it's with Jennings. Is OK, Isaac? Good work, mate. Good. Corey Parker. 33rd birthday on Tuesday. He reached uh, the 300 mark. Started the season in NRL. Greg Bird. Right on the halfway line, Australia then. Six all the score in the test match. The Anzac test match as Thurston dribbles the ball down. And Chilvasa Shek throws a 20 metre pass to Nightingo. And the trainer just out with Greg Inglis. Addressing something there. And I know it's easy in hindsight, but Jonathan Thurston, at his time over, he wouldn't be charging that kick down. It's a low percentage play. Very often leads to the opposition getting another set. Kiwis took advantage of Peter Hickley now coming in field looking for the football. Just on. An attempt to charge down from Jonathan. He must have gone close to wearing a boot in the face. That's been lost by Luke, and it sort of got, it has gone forward. There was half a moment, I thought play was going to be allowed to continue, Wally. Sorry, Rebs. There was half a chance out wide here. if they hadn't yes. managed to slip the ball away, Gus. There was oh, half a space. Wally, it was a big chance, and I, I'm not really sure what Tohu Harris was looking at go, as Isaac Luke came towards him. Because you see it on the high shot. If he just gets outside Chambers there, look, they're sort of getting in his way. Easily outside them there, with big numbers. So Luke has come off after that hit and going into the game in jumper 14 is Lulawai and uh, Trent Merrin about to come on for Australia. 
Well, that'll be very interesting getting a report on Isaac Luke because he was dusty when he came back, but he wasn't holding any part of his body at all. His first finds Inglis. Inglis is rounded up. James Tamo is out there, as we discussed. And Greg Bird jams the ball up inside the 30 metre line. So Trent Merrin goes out there. He's on debut at test level. James Tamo. 15 metres out from the line. Cameron Smith for Cooper Crom. Now to Sam Fiber. He's taken down. And Petter Hicku has got an ankle problem. He's gone. Oh, he's he's gone. Play the ball. He's, he's indicating I can't That's go on. Fourth, Sam Thido. Tackle four. So Jared Sutton. Oh, man. Jared Sutton got the message very quickly. Yeah, I think he might have dislocated an ankle or some sort of lower leg problem here, but he's immediately. Yeah, no, pointed to the sideline and said, I'm gone. Oh, uh, they clashed shins there. It was something of a trip. He sort of got his leg out there and he catches the leg of Sam Thiday and then doesn't move and signals to the sideline, I'm gone, I'm gone. It might have been a premature call on the player's behalf here because... Well, I'm not sure about his de medical degree, but... They've strapped it up and he's right to go. Well, there you are. Wait for the I'm whistle. gone, but I'm Keep okay. Line, Kevin. Well, suited the Kiwis just for it. Hold! Tackle four, go. Four. So, fourth tackle. Played out. Lewis away, first and on. Ingles in. Jennings tries to step Proctor. Five out from the corner post. And here is Thurston. Plenty of time. And they go over towards Hiku, but he's able to shovel it over the dead ball line. Line drop out to Rizzo. Yes. Well, that's the quickest bit. recovery I've ever seen in my life. Peter Hiku. And they were testing him, Gus. He was the man that they kicked to. They could have gone a little bit wider. The spaces were open, but went to him quite nicely. Ah, that's what the crowd was booing about. There's an Australian hand appears to have put it dead. Sneaks out of nowhere. Cooper is it Cooper Cron? 20, there's a touch. Yeah, well done. Wait, wait. No reason why a decision can't be reversed in an effort to get it right. And New Zealand will come out now with out, seven out, tackles out. to restart. Wait, Jason. They are good ones to get right. They, they are so big in the game, whether to restart from a line drop out or a 20 metre tack. Thomas Nulawai fighting right about a minute coming in from his left wing. The carry up towards halfway. The West Tigers forward. Four and over to Johnson. Johnson having a mesmerise for a second or two. Kenny Dow, 30 metres out from the line now. Coming away from the eastern side to Johnson again. Here's Foran to Powell. Does a pirouette. Shapes to pass. Takes the tackle. Does pass. Foran runs away from Tamo. Runs at Cameron Smith and Tamo comes from behind. So Lulawa to the left side for Johnson again. Here's the kick out towards Manu. Up goes Peter Peter Hicko. Here's Mark Vanavai. And Vanavai gets his second try. Good. Two tries in the test in November, and a couple today to boot. And how big the call at the other end of the field to change the restart. Kiwi's flags are flying, and, and this is a remarkable return here from Peter Hukku on the Harvey Norman replay, because he's the man who gets in position to take it in front of Josh Durgan and immediately looks for support and just bats it back to Manu Vatavay. It will score every day of the week that close to the line with one in front.
there's Manu taking a well-earned earned drink. I tell you what, the fans down at the Milton Street end or Milton Road end, whichever it is, they played a big part in all of that. Their chorus went up when uh, it was deemed that New Zealand had made a dead. And I'm sure without their intervention, there might not have been any intervention, but the replay clearly showed that it was Cooper Cronk. So to the Kiwi supporters up there on the southern end, well done. Johnson then, 10-6 up, and he makes it 12. Darren Lockyer, sideline. Yeah, we'll have a look at this replay, and it highlights the, the difficulty sometimes when players play out of position. Josh Dugan, who normally plays at fullback for the Dragons, he's just out of position here in the wing. He's just standing flat-footed and can't get a jump at the ball. And the Kiwis take advantage of that. I'm sure that's not the last time the Kiwis will try that. The jump at the ball, just concentrating on that for a moment. Can Guess who it that? was that went up for the Kiwis? Peter Hecker. Yeah, he's got good body position. As a restart, we'll find Kieran Ford, who'll find Chappell. Talk about an impact player. Certainly fits the bill. Very rare way that you see a goal kicker from wide out miss two in a row from a similar spot. Mate. Fantastic at making that little adjustment to get it right, just as we saw Johnson do. Good role here for the Kiwis from Harris. Halfway line. And 12-6 in favour of New Zealand. Working over. And it's against the defence of Australia. Working on the tackle player. A yeah, nice roll on going here. And I have to say the Kiwis look far more fluent in possession than Australia do at this particular time. And they're growing in confidence the further this goes. Some good ball moves. A few offloads. And it's really bringing their skill players into play. Darren Locke here again. Another good news for the Kiwis is Isaac Luke will be to come back. Here's Moa. Centre of the ground, 22 metres out. So to the captain, Mannery. Switch to rugby league. He's a late bloomer when he's 17. Now for Lulawai to come back. The forward to go in and find two of us as yet. Three metres out from the line. Lulawai looking left, looking right. Goes long behind decoys to Johnson. He'll score the number seven. Sean Johnson, he's picked it up where he left the Four Nations and scored himself a try now. And he's picked it up because he loves playing in this New Zealand side when he's got Isaac Luke and Thomas Lulawai controlling the ruck area. He's got Kieran Foran to do a lot of the organisational play so he can just play off the back of that. And on the Harvey Norman replay, right foot step on the inside of Jonathan Thurston, stumbles over, the Kiwis have gone bang, bang. And back at Suncorp, the Kiwis have done, I would imagine, exactly what they wanted to do, and that would be to take the Australian crowd out of the game if they can. Well, they're doing that right now at 16-6. to 6. Johnson to convert his own try. That was brilliant there from Johnson. He got one-on-one -on -one with Thurston, beating with a right foot step back to the inside. Tarmau was lazy getting across to cover his, his teammate. And Johnson just found them out very quickly with sharp feet. Big lead now. Johnson straight over the black dot. He's running up a total of points similar to what he scored in the in the Four Nations. He was the leading point scorer in that tournament. Well, a lot of people wondered what was the, the strength behind Sean Johnson's game to win the world's best rugby league player. We've seen plenty of that on display already tonight. He is targeting the players on the edge of the ruck. He's got the best sidestep in rugby league. He will continue to do so just two passes wide of the ruck. While he referring to the Golden Boot Award that Sean won at the end of last year, I should have mentioned that at the top. Uh, I said we have three Golden Boot winners out there. Of course, Sean Johnson makes it four Golden Boot winners, and he's playing very much like the best footballer in the world. This is four that we haven't seen at NRL level. 
think that would be shared by many. Certainly found it in the black and white, hasn't he? He's to Powell. Taking it up the centre and they lift him off his feet and bury him. Well, they would have drowned him on Friday night. Now for Mo. Three Australians combined. Merrin, one of them, with Friday. Now Luke. Very much a case of him running to the defensive line rather than vice versa. Johnson, now, there Johnson goes that Powell. familiar bomb that he sends up and it's got plenty of hand time. Thurston's on the ground in back play as Inglis gets taken down on his own 10 metre line. 18 play six there with uh, six minutes to go before the break. And uh, the 14, Luke Lewis. He's about to go into the game, so Tim Sheens using his last bench player. Can you hold it? That was a silly penalty there from the Kiwis. They had Australia on the back foot. Just got over enthusiastic and conceded the penalty. And that's, that just lets Australia off the hook. Tamo. Met by Mannery and Johnson. Down low, Lula Wai. Eastwood is about to come into the game. Star gets the eventual ball from his dummy half. So Australia working their way down into New Zealand's red zone, but a mistake by Cronk. He knew Martin. what he wanted to do. Hey, he couldn't hold Don't the ball. <laughs> Yeah, very, very clumsy from the Australians. Very clumsy. And I've got to say, right from the start of the game, they've, they've been off the pace, even though they got the early lead. They've just been off the pace with all their execution. We were asked on the panel before the game how many of these Australians might be playing their last test match. And I said, well, I would like to think they all go in with that attitude, that this might be the last time I pull on the green and gold. I haven't seen that attitude today. I haven't seen the bristling enthusiasm and, and energy that you would normally expect from Australian side. Which is sometimes a sure sign that it's getting old. Kenny Dow. And a penalty Tackle goes to New Zealand. Tackle is high. And Zach Tess coming to you live on the 9 NBN Win and Impajar Networks. Paja. <laughs> take the choice what a huge couple of minutes coming up here to take us to the break New Zealand can put on any more points or oranges we've made things very difficult that's a great touch finder from Sean Johnson that's right down on the 20 metre line Australia need to be very very tough here physically and mentally so Johnson taking the free Greg Eastwood. Stand up and get squared. Lock in, Greg. Both dummy halves out there now with Lulawai with the ball. 12 out. Middle ground. Luke turning it back in for Eastwood. He tries to fend away from Smith. He's able to pass. Lulawai then to, to power. To power. Taken to ground. Seven metres out. Time not far away. Oh. Penalty New Zealand again. Big penalty. Leave it. Leave it. Let you go. He's having a good time, Martin to power. He's, he's got a bit Put personal with a few Australian players. The last the five two. minutes, Sean Johnson points doing? to the post. Simon Mannering has stopped it. No, he's done it. No, no, no. He's done it. Oh. What are you doing? I think he was asking go for two. Shape this morning, Stella. Well, it's an easy decision here, I think, to take the two points. Simon Mannering came across for a moment. He thought about taking the tap and playing on, but a 14-point lead here would be enormous in the shadows of half-time. Uh, let's see, he's getting a little bit of a squeeze there from Sam Thiday behind, and he says, you and me later, baby. I'm coming back. seem to concern Sam too much so Johnson has scored him himself a try one of three for New Zealand in the first half 
He missed with one conversion, so he is about to add a further two points to a scoreboard that should read 20 to 6 after this. Just off center, he's on the 20 meter line in from the touch line. Sean Johnson there. And he's really got it on target now. He missed with his first, but uh, on that same angle, he's had no problems at all since. Well, they're doing it really comfortably, New Zealand, and I'm not quite sure what Tim Sheens is going to be able to say to his troops at half time. It's virtually got to come from within. You don't need the coach here. You need the players to pull together and say, listen, this is nearly at the embarrassing point, and we need to show a little bit of fight. They're playing at home in front of their own fans, and they're not delivering. Kiwis haven't gone outside their game plan either, Gus. They've stuck to it the whole first half. Kearney would be elated. They look a step defense. and a half quicker everywhere. Right? Everything that they do. Yes, to power with the ball. Captain by Dugan. Butterway down this short side. Ball away to Heku. And it comes out. He was in fear of being taken into touch with the ball. Played then by Manu. On to Lubawai. Then to Eastwood. Seconds tick away to the halftime siren. Fifteen of them left in the game. Little away to Johnson. Johnson got a ball away. It's to Chilvas as yet. There's an overlap, but it's closing. Nightingale pokes one back into the middle. Inglis urgent. He misses the ball. It's a try to New Zealand. A try to Sean Kenny Dow. Sean Kenny Dow has scored. We're back right to the half time. Have a try. Want to clear the onside. Well, right from the time they caught the kickoff, you could feel something was going to happen in this set of six. Big charge by Tapao. Big charge by Vatu Vay. They weren't content just to go to the break. While they were on top, they wanted to ram it home. And this is absolutely brilliant as they get it out to the edge. Now, it's just Sean Kenny Dow back up enough here to get behind. I think that's OK. I don't think you can take it off him from there. Nightingale gets the kick. Inglis races back, makes a play to push it dead, goes over the top of the ball, and Kenny Dow gets the spoils. That's a brilliant try. And again, the energy, just the sheer energy and will of this New Zealand side to go 100 metres has forced an error from one of the greats. And Kenny Dow rams home the advantage. Wow, Rabbits, look at that scoreboard. Well, it's impressive if you follow New Zealand. The try has been awarded. There might have been a little question mark about onside. I think he had a foot certainly behind the kick from Jason Nightingale. So what a sensation. 24 to 6. And Sean Kenny Dowell has scored in the shadows of halftime. Chua Vasasek came in. The Harvey Norman replay, Nightingale, beautiful kick. And then Greg, Greg Inglis, makes the mistake. And Sean Kenny Dow, New Zealand's best player of the year when they won the Four Nations in 2010, gets another try. They're fourth in the game. Two to Vatavai, one to Johnson, one to Kenny Dow. Well, there will be pride in this Australian side. They will not lie down from the challenge of making a fight back. But we are seeing, I think, as predicted before the game, a real changing of the guard here. This kick for Johnson. And again, he's got it absolutely spot on. Holden half-time is next, Peter Sterling and Darren Lockyer. And Cameron Williams will be asking them, who can pull Australia out of this one? Can anyone do it? It's a boil over in the making here. 26 to 6. The Kiwis over the Kangaroos.
Jordan Kenny Dow, the other try scorers. Cameron Smith takes the Kangaroos out. And a deficit at half time of 26 to 6. It's the biggest differential in a test match at half time since 1999. They trailed 24-4 on that occasion, got beaten 24-22. The highest deficit ever was in 1992, Australia v England, 22-0 at halftime. Jared Sutton about to blow time on for the second half, and Australia have an Everest in front of them. Well, you're expecting a reaction, aren't you? You're, you're expecting emotion, physicality, togetherness, Stay behind and everything that we've come to expect from those in the green and gold jersey. We haven't seen it in the first 40 minutes. Now's the time to deliver. Johnson a little bobble there and he's come back with Nightingale. Just out from his own line. Martin to power. To the 10. Wally Lewis and Phil Gould and Peter Sterling. Box will be to as it presses on towards tonight. And Darren Locke here on the sideline. Those greats are looking with amazement at the proficiency of this New Zealand side. Keeping in mind, if they win this match, they will go to England on tour at the end of the year. And if they beat England, they will be officially ranked as the number one side in rugby league. Greg Inglis, 22 metres out from his own line. A minute gone in the second half. Is Dugan put down on the 30 metre line? They're not leaving anything at home in defence. They're hitting and hitting like hammers. They drive Australia into the ground. 40 metres out, and Isaac Luke leading the procession there. And here is Fido up to the halfway line. Matt Scott playing the ball on the New Zealand forward with the line. Cameron Smith. For Jennings. It's come off the foot there of Lulawai. And he says play on, not play back. And Cameron Smith puts it high down to Chuavasa Shek. He'll be made to play the ball just inside the 20. Nate Nightingale. Right in the middle of the ground, his own end. Guarding the northern end. Kenny Dow picked up that try seconds before half time. It's a little away. Scott. To power. So strong. Halfway line. Out of dummy half is Luke and it bounces as it's raked across the ground to Dugan. It's taken by Lula White around the legs and fallen over the top. Ray, what Martin Capel's been able to do is make up wide to Michael Jennings again, is maintain what his big forwards did in the first 15, 20 minutes of the game. What, what Madalino Bromwich were able to do, he's maintained and in fact he's added energy. So been no, no lull whatsoever. He's in that's going to be involved. Nearly goes through. Johnson hangs on. Rule away. Goes in to assist his number seven, but good metres by Inglis. They're down on the 30 and he drags a penalty from the whistle of Jared Sutton. And that's what we need. Some energy from the leaders. From the big name players in the side. Here's Lewis. Is where they are, 15 metres away from the line. Tarnow. Cronk indicating he wants it. And now he's got it. He sweeps it back from right to left and then the run around with Thurston. Jennings is taken. Kenny Dow and the Nightingale. A long ball finds Cronk almost in the middle of the park. Thurston drops it down to Scott. He does the same to Mirren. And Mirren is out of the tackle. Got it back to Cronk on 
to Thurston. Thurston kicks for his winger, and that could be it could be a try for Dugan. Dugan, I don't know that he's that confident. The tackle four. We have no, no try. No try, the referee is saying. Touching goal line. Yeah, Roger Tuivasa Shek had the arms crossed across his chest too, saying no try. It's brilliant work from Thurston. Lovely offload from Merrin to keep the flow going. But on the back of the penalty, Australia here. Let's have a look at the kick. There's no problem there. He doesn't no. look confident, does he, Gus Dugan? Well, no, and, and, and the New Zealanders were crossing their arms on their chest too. Let's have a look. Manu. Oh, dear, oh, dear. His foot's on the line. It's not even close. It's not even close. Where's the linesman? Where's the linesman? That's the his funny line part, there. funny part about the linesman, he stood on the in-touch, on the in-touch in goal line. Well, he sort of said no try. It is no try. But brilliant work, just yeah. the same. So the ball comes back yeah, for yeah. Okay. the 20-metre restart. Boys? Six tackles in international rules. And again, a non-specialist winger coming, having to come up with a specialist play there in the corner. It's always dangerous picking people totally out of position in big play. Those big moments count. A person more adept at playing on the wing might have got that finish right. Harris to the 40 metre. Middle ground. Luke. Lula White. Now from four, it's gone out the back to Johnson. And again, Ray, with Thomas Lula White out there as well as Isaac Luke, it just continues to free up Sean Johnson. Let's that go to his half partner in Kieran Four. Johnson can just play ad lib off, off the back because he's got plenty of other blokes to take control. There he is now. Putting it in the air. And over there by Dugan. Made, made to play the ball pretty close to his own line straight after the test match nine news and then the Logies live from Melbourne up for its 1000th Logie award good luck to Paul and the boys and the girls Merrin Open side they go. Australia working it towards halfway with Nate Miles. And Smith keeps it low, kicking from outside his 40, and here's Chivavasa Shek. Inside the 30 metre line, and Nightingale is there. And Miles tackles him, he offloads the ball, and it's come down to Scott. I don't know whether the ball got any help or not, but play goes on, and Cronk will play the ball there on the 30-metre line. Cameron Smith, this is Chambers. Now they're on the 20. Cronk dropping it down on the inside for Miles. And Nate playing it right in front of the uprights. And Smith it is, back for Thurston. It's come off the boot of the New Zealander. That's not a knock-on. Sean Kenny Dowell has got the ball for the Kiwis. Now they get a penalty on the back of it. And again, the enthusiastic Kiwis getting up and bustling the big plays of the Australians. And they've looked out of sorts all afternoon, the Aussies, as they try to string plays together. It's all predictable stuff. It's all normal club-type football. They're not actually using the skill and experience of the players. They're just, they're just rolling through plays. Yeah, well, most times in international football, Gus, you have a plan to be able to fall back on if you're doing it really tough. Usually, you'll go out there and just come up with uh, the same skills that you've been displaying week in, week out. It's gained you international selection. Mannering. Start of the game. Look at this one. And that, that, that's a perfect example of Jesse Bromwich, but just to complete that, he started the game in everything. Flory finding Chuavasa Shek, and uh, the ball has come down and coming away with Hiku. Runs a 360, gets it back to Luke, and now it's come away to Madalino. He's up, uh, looking to unload, he doesn't, he plays the ball on the 30. Luke goes to Foran, Foran pushes on to Harris, gets the ball to Hiku. Three. Oh. He's lost the ball in the tackle of Friday. Bernie, coming up the 
tackle four. And no try. So look how the ball comes out and then if it finishes up, grounded by Hume. Well, I think it must have been Greg Inglis got a piece of this ball as Manu stepped back inside. He carries the ball normally in his left hand. And he's got it in the left arm. He will step back inside and I think it's Inglis gets a piece of the ball with the left arm here. Now Inglis pulls it out. Now, for me, in the old days, that's just a drop ball, you know, whether they've stripped it out or not. But God knows what a video referee might do with this. Inglis grabs at the ball. To me, that's a knock on. Last contact. Yeah, last contact is him. And the ball. Yeah. Mm. Well, if they declare this a try, I give up rugby league forever. Right. Thank you. Thank God for that. Well, we thought he had a hat trick there. I was just starting to get to like you too. We've, we've deemed he's attempting to make a tackle. There's not an intention to strip. It's a scrum, Simon. That's a good call. Simon, scrum boys. That's where it should be. It's, it's a narrow escape there for the Australians. And in that set of six, this comes on the back of a Matalino run and a quick play of the ball. Just before that in the set of six, they attack down the left-hand side after the Jesse Bromwich run. So it's not just the, the power of the run. It's what it sets up the next play for this New Zealand team. And again, they nearly made it count. Chambers. Lewis. Inside the 20-metre line. Now for Thurston, and he's on the pass. It's gone across towards Johnston. Recovered by Thurston. Play goes on. Johnston will play the ball. Tackled by Johnston. That was Johnston tackled by Johnston. Now it's with Parker. Five metres in the New Zealand Territory and the penalty. Nick Corey Parker likes to offload in this situation. Well, he's a serial offloader. He's always got the ball available. So it's hard not to tackle him without getting a piece of the ball. Now, he's trying to unload that. Dead set trying to unload that. That is a really bad penalty. You've got to know your players. Simon, Simon, here, Simon. Thurston taking the free, just inside the 30-meter line. And Lewis. Stand up, mark your square. Held by Mannering. The Smith goes over towards the centre and turns. The ball back to Scott. They are getting closer to Australia. They're on the 10 metre line. And Cronk got the ball away to Jennings, who came from the left side. Adding some extras on the right. Smith now comes back to the middle for Parker. Parker a metre away from the line. Smith. 16 is Miles. And he's lost the ball. Isaac Luke put him Isaac down. Luke and one on one. Came up laughing. Well, it's a great tackle on a bigger man. And Nate Miles, in trying to get a quick play of the ball, just loses all technique. Let's go to pack it. Well, Isaac Luke, Luke, the strength of this man. It's quite remarkable. He does play at the football a little bit as well. <laughs> just a bit more than a little bit. I the tackle was very good. There's tackle no doubt about good. that. The was it was the good. aftermath that has left people saying, hang on a moment. So New Zealand. Dubious one down the other end. Now here is Gattelfe. And look at this for power. 28 out from the line. Good run, Manu. Now Hiku. 40 metre line. 26 to 6. 11 minutes gone, second half. The Anzac test. And New Zealand looking to beat Australia three in a row. Haven't done that since 1953. Well, it. A knock on. The scrum is going to pack with Australia getting the feed. 40 metre line, they're in. Australia packing the scrum, saving as much as they can in time. Martin Tapao has had a very big influence with his presence on the on the ground today. Greg Bird about to come back into the game. 
Watch the Australians realise the urgency of the situation and, and set it. As quickly as they could to not waste time, even with half an hour in the pot. We don't see that enough. As Johnson tries to scoop down the short side. Jason Smith looks for Parker. Corey Parker to the 30 metre line. Country counting for City earlier today. And Wagga Wagga. He's gone over to Cronk now. He sweeps it to Thurston. Inglis is coming on the right side. Turns it in for Chambers. Chambers to Thurston. The ball went behind Thurston. Picked up by Cronk. They're 10 metres out. Four tackles gone. Thibay goes long and finds Miles. And Miles, not held, got the ball to Thurston. Thurston tries to step. He beats Matalino. Tackled by Bromwich, five gone. Oh, no. The long ball has found Cronk. Puts a little kick over towards Blue again, and he got the ball away when tackled. Chambers for Cronk, and Cooper Cronk goes over the line. Has he got the ball down, or has he held up in goal? Bernie, on last tackle, and no try. We're looking if the ball gets to the line. Well, it's been a frantic few minutes for the Australians, isn't it? As they try to get some momentum and a try on the board. And in the end, a misdirected kick, a fortuitous offload, but just sheer will on the on the support play from Kronk. They're on side, there's no problem there. The kick is misdirected. It's very short of the mark, so Dugan is allowed to take it by Manu Vatuve. He's able to get it back. Chambers thought about a little kick. Kronk's well short there. Forget about what happens now. That tackle's over. He's well short. Well short. Who tackled that? Was that two of us, check? That's how a fullback defends his line. Look at that. That's over. That's the end of it there. That's all over. That's how a fullback defends your line. Body on the line. Body all in. Get down low and throw everything you've got at it. And he has just denied Cooper Cronk a try. The black and white. Again, That's rejoicing. Change over here. Australia Inside. trying to drag back from 26-6 yep. down at half time. A couple of tries go. denied them. I love fullbacks oh, that defend their in goal oh, like that. They just go. throw everything at them. Oh, Say, so this is my oh, turf, you're not coming oh, in here. Oh, Luke, Giovasashek, pulled down by Chambers on the 20 metre line. Miku, short side. Lewis hangs on to the shirt tape. 30 metre line for Hiku. Now for Harris. Barging run. Eight metres from halfway. Down low to Johnson. Kicks and kicks long. Down to Greg Inglis. He's got Josh Dugan with him. It's through the tackle of Hiku. Jesse, clear it! But Bromwich makes the tackle, and Dugan has a bit of a dance there with Vatuve. 35 metres out from his own line, played by Josh Dugan. Long pass on the half volley for Thurston. Showed it to Bird. Cameron Smith to go away to Parker. One, two, three. Parker looking to offload, and there it is. As Gus said, he's a serial offloader. Oh, Jesse, come on! And 5A plays it right in the middle of the ground. Here's Smith, he dummies to a decoy from Parker. Finds Bird. And Bird is swarmed upon by Johnson and Proctor. Short side play. Parker again. Ball across the back of the ruck and Bird puts in a big kick and it's going down to Hiku. Well, Australia sort of deteriorated now to making it up on the run. There is not much rhythm to their play at all. They've become isolated as individuals. Lula has gone back into the game. He's with the ball now. 
and Isaac Luke has come from the field. Darren. Yeah, well, you, the Aussies have thrown plenty at the Kiwis, and uh, while the Kiwis were going to attack in the first half, their defence tonight's been outstanding. You think the Kangaroos need some points if they're going to make a comeback, but look at that. Tackle in opposition 20, 23 to Australia, 8 to New Zealand. Great defence of Kiwis. Johnson. Just a question mark on the onside with those players on the left of the ground. Doesn't come into effect until that is made, that tackle, but referees happy with the fact they are behind the kicker. Is Inglis 15 out from his goal mouth and 15 out from the half time break and they've weathered the storm New Zealand. They've conceded one or two tries in that period. And they might have started looking over their shoulder or they'd give a penalty away now which doesn't help their course. And they've done that a couple of times today, Peter. They've had Australia really on the back foot in their own territory. And they've come up with a really lazy penalty that just doesn't need to be given. And that just releases the pressure valve. They've really got to get their knee on their throat and keep it there. Miles. That would, that would have been the message at half-time from Stephen Kearney. Sorry, Ray. Is don't invite the opposition back into this game. Pucker. 17 outs. Kiwis have not won a mid-season test since 1998. First an outside-inside ball for Inglis. Taken by Mannering and Bromwich. Smith goes to the right side across the face of Parker. Friday, Cronk, lofted ball, Chambers. Good set of this kid, but probably wasn't the match that he was dreaming of making his debut in. Smith long to the feet of Cronk, a bouncing ball to Miles, back to Jennings, and Jennings turns on the accelerator. Five out, five gone. We'll send him Last back tackle. to the bar. Take it back. Last one. Last one, Cameron. Last one. So Smith and his Thurston, and trying to do something for Johnston. Back to Thurston. He gets the ball away. Cronk is there. Gets it away on the bounce to Inglis. They're 25 out now, though. They've gone from 5 out to 25 out. Now they're 15 out. They offer them a knock-on. And it's with Dugan. And Dugan makes a surge for the line. Bernie, I'm back surge to tackle to zero. Jared Sutton. I had no try. Just want to make sure, confirm that Dugan knocks it on as well. And he doesn't get to the line. Well, there's a fair bit to look at here on the back of some razzle-dazzle, if not frantic football from Australia. Fifth tackle option came down a short left-hand short side and the ball ends up way over on the right-hand side. 14 is Luke Lewis standing out there at right centre. What he's doing out there, no one knows. But the grubber kick is going to get a mistake out of Manu. Or it comes off his foot and his head. And then Dugan gets it. Dugan's touched it there, I think. Yeah. Off his head and his foot. Yeah. Ne neither of them are knock-ons. Unless he intentionally headed the ball forward and he didn't do that. And then Dugan, after knocking on, doesn't make the line <laughs> yet. Late here too, possibly. And he's got nowhere near the line either. Jeez, they've defended their line well. Now, Manu, I think this comes off his foot and then his head. <laughs> yes. foot, foot to head. Foot head. I think he might have got a bit of forearm on it. He did well to stay in. Now, well, just look at the strength of this big bloke. He just picks him up. You think you're going in there? Well, think again. Back this way. And no, that's the completed tackle anyway. So he's short. Yep. No try. It'll be interesting to see whether or not they rule and knock on against Manu for the off the foot, off the head. So let's have a... Manu knocks it on first. Yep. Dugan doesn't get to the line, but it's a knock on from Manu first. It's a scrum. Scrum, okay. Your feed. So Australia get the feed. Yeah. Manu has obviously got some of the the arm, the hand or the forearm to the ball. No, but Manu's on him straight we away. Know so we know it in his head, we know it in his foot, but apparently it's also really hit go. some of the, oh, the boys, actual arm. Up. I don't think there's anything left to hit. Is there any other part of the anatomy? 
Okay, Roger. Well, Australia have lined everyone out to the left here from this scrum. There's no one on the right. So Manu's out on his own. He's got no one to tackle. They're all out to the left, all the big guns. Come on, out. And we find ourselves with Thurston. Round for Durgan. And this is there. Standing before eventually succumbing to the tackle of Kenny Dow. They go to the right side and Parker, Jill Parker, close to the line. Close to the right. Smith. Round Miles goes Smith again. Thurston. Back to Chambers, they must score here, you would think. Or have they Ready? defended it again? I'm on tackle three. That says yes. Have a try. Try for Australia. Oh, make Chambers. sure there's no obstruction inside the ball. Chambers here. Well, we're going to have a look, as you heard from the, the referee, Jared Sutton, whether there's any obstruction in the lead up to this play. It, it's been coming. They, they look certain to score on a number of occasions in this last 20 minutes. Again, the desperation of the New Zealand defence makes it difficult. There's no obstruction anywhere there. Runs to the inside shoulder. That's fine. No, yeah. it's all good. That's a defensive area, area there. They've come in on Luke Lewis and Chambers. Well, the ball was on the ground when we sort of came back. And Chambers was back in the field of play. He must reach out and slam it down. There it is. And he does. My goodness, that... Spider cam shot gave us some lovely pictures of obstruction or no obstruction. Chambers, the 800s kangaroo, got himself a try. And to do. Jonathan Thurston to convert the Will Chambers try. It's coming back and it's a goal. Conversion to Thurston, 26 to 12. The scoreboard in favour of the Kiwis. And for the most of the game, it's felt like the Kiwis were well on top. But all of a sudden, we get 21 minutes to go and it's only 14 the difference. It doesn't seem so bad. And that man there, Thurston, is the one they're going to have to watch over this last period. He will lift his team Stay behind this year alone at the Cowboys. He's resurrected them from the jaws of defeat and onto the victory dais a number of times. Thurston will be everywhere in this final 20 minutes. Nate Miles mightn't have appeared to do much in that try, but he simply took the ball up. It was a little hit and spin for a run around with Cronk, and it sort of did the trick for Australia. Made the job a little bit easier for the outside man. Parker bumping away from Johnson. It's the 30 metre line, Australia's in. You're interesting to see how New Zealand handled this. And it will lead to the back a little bit. Side A to Cronk and Cronk to Lewis. Where do they try to now protect the lead? Well, they're still aggressive enough to think that they can score another try. Here's Smith asking a question. He's made to play the ball eight metres. Position high. Here's Thurston going high. He bounced down about 15 hours and Martin Gale. What a take. What a take from your man Nightingale. Once described, or maybe twice described by you as an awkward gangly sort of thing. He is. But he's a good awkward gangly sort of thing. He's in this uh, this tackle at the moment, having a little facial on the way down. Kenny Dow, cross to Harris, who's taken by Chambers. Melbourne on Melbourne. Hicko, Manley, taken low by Fide over the top bird. Played to Lulawai. Johnson, right foot stab, down towards the, the junction at the 20. English bringing it back. Across at Johnston. You don't need any part of this, not yet. Well, Sean Johnson would have been happy to see that go into touch. He knows his side is a little bit tired at the moment. Fatigue, they haven't had much football. They've conceded the try. 
starting to get a bit tired mentally as well as physically. The Australians traditionally have been very good at getting out of trouble. No greater test in the next 19 minutes. Darren Woods. And the 16, Sam Moa, about to come back into the test match. Thurston has a ball out the back to Jennings. Five gone Australia. English to Thurston for the kick. Goes down towards the try line. Underneath it is Chilvasis yet. Down the ground, makes the initial tackle, but Bird completes it. Now, their last set of six was pretty ordinary for Kiwis, and look at them starting to bounce now a little bit behind the play the ball. And that's fatigue, and the scoreboard's starting to take its toll. Manu's come in, big run. They need a few more of those. They've just lost their positivity at the moment with the ball. This is the fourth tackle we're watching now. Bromwich held in the upright tackle. Roosters Tigers. It's Friday night football in New South Wales at 7.30. Broncos Panthers is the Friday night game for Queensland viewers to see at 7.30. Here's Inglis. We've seen that before. So we've got some nearly fine in touch. Green Inglis keeping the ball in play. Propped up. The Over the top of Inglis. The ball is wow. lying on the ground and Jared Sutton gives a penalty to Australia on their own 20 metre line. Rest period for Fide. Halfway line for the free kick. I'll tell you what I've really enjoyed about this game, Rabbits. Every time we get to the internationals and we get a taste of the one referee again, I get a little tear in me on. Time out. So much better. I must have them thinking, though, did we, did we need the two? Is it a play from Thurston? He's finished up on the seat of his pants. And Inglis will play the ball. Right in the middle of the ground, 20 metres out from the New Zealand line. Crack outside, inside, Tamo. He's lost the ball, picked up by Nightingale. Nightingale running an arc and is able to beat Lewis. He's outside the 20. He's come across 30, over 40. And he'll play the ball near the halfway line. Now they're lining up. Giro tackle. That's Hiku on one. And superb work from Simon Mannering at the other end. Two tackles in a row. The first on Greg Inglis coming up the middle. The second on James Tamo after he went through. Easy to miss, but they were big plays. Bromwich played the ball. Moa gave it to Johnson. Johnson goes back to Moa. That was Lula Way of dummy half. Luke Lewis. 30 yards from the Australian line. 26 to 12. The Kiwi. Their first mid-season test since 1998. Looking to beat Australia three in a row for the first time in 61 years. Three in a row. Lulawa for Moa. Moa for Johnson. Decoy Proctor. Now with Kenny Dow. He loses the ball in the impact of the tackle. So it's a scrum. 12 out from the Australian line. Yeah, mate. It was a good tackle. Yeah. I think it was Greg Bird that came in from side on to knock the ball free. Some of the New Zealanders were protesting, saying it was simply knocked free by Bird. It should have been a play on. Here's the shot that spilled the ball sideways. Crowd here today, 32,681. 32,500 people here today. Okay, Cameron, we're going. Hit him, Roger. I wonder how many it would have attracted had they decided to try and play it on, on Friday night. Not many. Johnston. Well, they wouldn't have got to enjoy anywhere near the spectacle that they have with this dry series. Lewis now. Gets down the right hand side. Plenty of tries in this game. I doubt we'd have seen that Friday. Parker. The first daytime test between these two sides since. 78, I think it's it. Oh, he's been great shooting Kenny Dow. Thurston playing the ball, Smith picking it up. Down the ground, another 10 metres. And Smith looks for Cronk. Cronk with the ball, takes Lewis with him, and Thurston. The ladder gets the ball to Chambers, and Chambers drops it down to Thurston. He goes back to give Woods a chance to promote the ball. It's on the ground. Bird is probably knocked on. Yes, the referee is.
have seen it that Turned way. Over. Wow. He only had to pick that up, Greg Bird. And I think he had Jennings alongside of him. And Queen and okay. uh, Hold. New Zealand was Hold. shot. The ball comes wide. Kenny Dow goes racing in for the intercept. He picks this up. He's got Jennings there. Winger outside and only one to beat. But honestly, for the most part of this game, you would swear blind that New Zealand have watched Australia train all week and know exactly where they're going and what they're going to do. Oh. Greg Eastwood has lost the ball. I don't know who he's going to blame because there was nobody there. Sit there, boys. Other than himself. Well, the Kiwis are doing everything they can to give Australia enough ball to get their way out of trouble here. The tackle count must be getting up very, very high. <laughs> so the captain's gone to the bench. New Zealand, Roger, make sure you're in. Just watching other trainings. Wally, drones. Hey, Thomas and Sean, down you go. <laughs> A little bit different to the old <laughs> days, <laughs> Peter. Drones, they might. We couldn't mind the elastic enough times. Time's still off. Time's still off. Don't close that time. time test off. comment related to Don't here. Don't make early, mate. Wait for the out. Outside leg. Long time, isn't it? But what Peter said was so significant. The dry pitch, sunlight, obviously fading into night time for the back half of the game or the back quarter of the game. It gives you a better spectacle. More often than not, here's Lewis. Crock to the tackler. Australia down the middle of the ground. They're inside the 30 and they go behind Tarlo and back to Inglis. I don't think he's 100% ready. I mean, I keep waiting for him to break free, but he doesn't look like he's got the power in that leg at all. Even on some of his chases across the field, he hasn't looked comfortable. That game in Cairns last week, Gus, you and I said that, uh, that he appeared as though he didn't have a, a, lot, of, a lot of confidence in his leg. No, not at all. Thurston did well there. He lost the ball, but was able to knock it back for Jennings to promote the ball to Lewis. And now it's gone over to Guggen. Steps off his right foot, but everywhere you look, there's a sea of black and white. They're nine metres out from the line now, Australia. Cronk, almost the half volley. Jennings, and then Smith. Can he get rid of the ball? He comes around in an arc-like run. Thurston goes to ground this time. He passes, oh. but now Johnson's away Tackles with the ball. Mate. Change over. The referee has said, I've called it. Tackle, bring it back. I don't think James Tarmay would have run down Sean Johnson. No. Come off. But the Australians were going to protest there that he wasn't Stay held. Here, and they had to shut their mouths pretty quick because okay, Sam. <laughs> Johnson had the ball and he was gone. They're very, very tired, New Zealand. They've now made about 40 more tackles than Australia at this stage. A lot of it's been at their own end in this half. Full time is though only 12 minutes away. 26 to 12. Well, the Four Nations final might have been historic in many ways for them, but I think rejoicing, if in fact they are to win it, it's going to be even louder here. Well, if they win three in a row, and this would be three wins over Australia in a row, they haven't achieved that since 1952-53. They actually won four in a row on that occasion, but this is huge for New Zealand if they can close this out. Dugan. Oh, Eastwood and Josh Dugan is immediately well, clutching at his Josh Dugan, climb off. It's just an unfortunate Second collision one. here where he's just cartwheeled over the top of Greg Eastwood. Both players are hurt in this. Steps back off his left foot. Eastwood goes in low, cops the knee over. Dugan goes. Corks everywhere. Yeah, that's a, that's a collision in, injury right there. It didn't look like there was any real hyperextension or twisting of the knee, it's just sheerly a cork I reckon. We'll take a break and come back
So back at Suncorp, 26 to 12 in favour of New Zealand. And Josh Dugan still being attended to by one of the trainers in the interim. Greg Eastwood was escorted from the ground by another trainer uh, for a concussion test. And his uh, place on the ground has been taken by Martin Tapao. 26-12 with 11 minutes to go now, Peter. Yeah, time ticking away, and this break will help New Zealand just to regather themselves. I'm assuming that Isaac Luke can't be 100% after that conclusion with Greg Inglis. He's, he's had a couple of stints on the sideline. Just line. wait for the whistle, Josh. You've got to get your Greg foot Eastwood up, has mate. gone wait in to clear nice his play, head. Jesse. Hold tackle, him, that's the first tackle, obviously. Go, go. Back from the kick, Dugan, and Tamo. 30-metre line for James Tamo. And now for Aaron Woods. Logie's red carpet tonight. Seven. Dugan being escorted from Fields. Kevin Smith up the middle, fine, supporting. Parker, Parker to the 30-metre line, throws it out the back and hopes. Smith was there. He was the hope. Now it's Jennings, and Jennings is taken by Johnson. That's the ball. Loses the ball in the tackle. Johnson gets up. Teammates rush in to applaud with him. Is there any doubts about the form of the Golden Boot winner coming into this? He's dug into his his bag of tricks and found plenty of them today. Strong defence on Jennings there from Sean Johnson. And he's really smoking. There's a lot of pressure on that young man. He's the face of New Zealand Rugby League, isn't he really? Jesse. Head in, Martin. Outstanding young man. Plenty of charisma about him. Articulate, well-spoken, polite. Okay, At his one best, one out. of the game's best. Obviously, had a good last year. And the spotlight is always on him. Stand He's up, been great Marcus, tonight. Hold. Sean Kenny Dow playing the ball inside 20. Chilvasashek. Inside the 30-metre line. And Thomas Lulawai with Isaac Luke. We are assuming... Will take no further part. To power, the replaced Eastwood. And now Johnson showed it to Bromwich. The will of the wisp as he is. A couple of players guessing and groping for something to grab hold of. Here is Sean Kenny Dow cutting the passage back. On the right side into the middle. Lulaway is going to go open. Came to the short side and Johnson. Rolls it end on end, winding down the clock. So, nine minutes to go. Yeah, clever play there. It's game management. And I know I've spoken a lot about the power of, of the New Zealand players and the big men, but no one better than Sean Kenny Dale tonight. His reading in defence has been superb. His running of the football has been oh, great. New Zealand, let's go. As we go down to you, Darren Lockyer. Yeah, just a quick update on Josh Dugan. He just walked past here and said to the doctor he thought he hyperextended his knee. So his night's over. He's gone into the rooms. Hopefully for the dragon's sake, it's not too bad. Yes. Yeah, OK. in, Thomas! Australia. Out. Working and winning this run in Jennings. Kevin up now! Playing the ball 25 out from his own line. That's good work. Smith under Cronk. Cronk away. Now it's out to Thurston to give it on to Chambers. And Chambers is escorted to the ground by Petahiku over on that right side for Australia. Here's Lewis. Halfway line. Bromwich getting the job done with Muller. Woods. Parker. Embraced by Proctor. Low, Lulawai, played to Smith. Let's Woods go. Finds it is a chance of an obstruction himself, given by Woods unintentionally. Parker to Croft. Greg Inglis is chasing the ball pretty much up and down. In one spot and it comes off to Avasa check. And down to Greg Inglis. So Australia coming up with a real chance here. Parker to the 10. Flicks it out the back. Scooped up by Smith, given to Tamo. Oh, 
That's the first tackle as it goes away from Smith and down to Crump. At the first, and the line is open for Luke Lewis to score. Well, the has gone oh. forward. Referee has been tipped that it was a forward pass. It was the touch judge calling it too, Rabs. He was in perfect position. Crowd in total disagreement. Well, not quite. Many of them have got black and white jumpers on. That's the pass from Thurston. Yeah, it looked to go forward out of the hands, didn't it? Well, he stood still. He saw the collision coming from Hiku yeah. and stood still. He stood still this side of the line and the ball landed the other side of the line. The linesman was 100% right. How many times in this half have they visited that patch of turf over there? Plenty. They've had enough ball to win a dozen games. Honestly, the, the defensive effort from New Zealand in the second half has, has surpassed their attacking effort in the first half. The first half they were scintillating with the ball. But the second half they've been so gritty in defence. Wonderful performance by the Kiwis. Must rate as one of the, the best defensive efforts at test level that we've ever seen. Well, it's easy to say in the moment go back we might find similar yeah. efforts or better efforts but this has been tremendous performance because it's it's a good Australian side and it will, maybe some will get into a dangerous position there yes Greg Bird yeah I'm, I'm going to report anyway Bernie Greg Greg Bird Sean Greg we got a boys. Leave it, Jesse. It's on report. Yeah, just can't lift. Can't lift. Well, in this day and age, in this day and age, time's off. If you feel well, you have go, got boys. a hold of an opponent's leg, what makes you lift anymore? Given everything that we've been through and what the rules have done, I mean, it, it really is a dumb act. Sometimes it happens by accident. But when you've actually got the bloke like that and you know you're lifting, at some stage it's got to register, you know what, I've got to let go. Just, just going back to that Four Nations where the Australians went in this understrength as to the best side. No excuses tonight. Now, it's a, it's a very good point you make. I think we've been relaxed in the knowledge that we had a team with ten obvious selections not there. And as I said, I think we've been comfortable in that thought. But there, there are no excuses you can offer here. And this has been comprehensive. And as far as defence is concerned, it's been next door to impeccable. Outside, inside ball, and then put down by Hiku. Picked up by, it was to be picked up by Inglis. Knock he eventually got the ball, but a knock-on has been called. Here we are here, boys. And everyone spoke about last year how you know, the Australians were missing a lot of players and they blooded it on a new, lot of new players. It, it, honestly, that was good times for Australia because it showed the emergence of new players coming through the system. New Zealand, come on! And I think that's what come Australia's on. got to do. It's got to persevere with that over the next come couple on, of Jesse. years come to on, build their go. next best team. This Australian team has got very old it's before our pressure. eyes. Only a large number of them. Only three Australian in sides in history come have on, been older go. than this. Mm. That, 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 that they're 28 and a half by average. And my point is that very, very few, maybe one or two of these blokes, the older brigade I'm talking about, this country, the older brigade, will or should be there when a player, Australia plays in the World Cup in two and a half years' time. You can't take them all through together. And that's the point I was trying to make during the game. There are, there are far too many in that bracket and we've got to blood new players and that's what the city country's about it's hopefully what new south wales origin campaigns are about is bringing new blood in this, this has been a great great australian team love watching their play they're great players they've served as well but you can't be great forever thurston with an inside ball for tamo play thurston dropping it into the corner joe basashek might be held down here in fact, that tackle on Chiovasa's check, he has been termed as forcing the ball, but I just thought the tackle on him might have got a bit high. And that's Dugan. 
with the ice on the knee. So line dropout time for New Zealand. The news will follow this match immediately. And then, as I said, we head on into the Logies and the red carpet. Move into position, though. And Jonathan Thurston trying his all. It's the last minute, as always. Four and a half to go. A little left foot kick to force a restart. The Australians need to score three times. That won't be happening. So Johnson to go. 45. No, over the half now. So Luke Lewis. Out on the right edge now. And Greg Inglis. Been strong today, James Tamo. Merrin carries the ball to the 20 metre line. First and organising something on the open side. He runs around, gets the ball away. It's gone over through side A, put down by Inglis. And picked up over there by Harris. Torhu playing the ball inside the, the 20 metre line. Well, the whole game has been played down at this New Zealand end of the field in the second half. Australia have had all the ball. They've had enough ball there to score 20 tries. And they've only come up with the one. That is an outstanding Kiwi defence. Ollie, I'm thinking Steve Kearney and drones. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Because they have been on top of everything. They've been beautifully prepared for this game by their coach. who has been around a long time now as both a player... And the coach. Win. Sean Kenny Dow scored the try right on the straight at half time. His support staff were doing handstands and bouncing up walls. His expression did not change. Kick straight to Johnson. Stephen Kearney. Stephen Kearney. Youngest captain, I believe, ever in rugby league test match history. 39th test match was the, the coach. 45 times he played for the King Wheels. Chambers, wishing he could get rid of Foran's tackle. One of nature's gentlemen. Friday takes it up now. Jonathan Thurston on the inside to Aaron Woods. Again, numbers in the tackle. Forcing him down. He's throwing it back. It's gone back with the play on. And so it's with Jennings now. Square. 30 out from the line. We're down to the last minute and minute and a half. It's come off New Zealand. Parker trying to force the ball. Here we go. didn't see it that way. Johnson's on his way. Did this pretty much at Wellington late in the game. Pulled down. Great chase by Greg Inglis. I still think it was a knock on by New Zealand way, way back down the ground. That makes little difference. 26 to 12. With a minute and a quarter to go. And that, ladies and gentlemen, Manu Vatave is the Charles Savory medalist. Man of the match. Manu has voted by the Australian and New Zealand selectors. Well, it's a great performance all round. For a winger, his contribution has been a match winning one his teammates as the black and white flags fly very high here at Suncorp. They didn't mind waiting an extra couple of days. And what a chase from Greg English. Sean Johnson was away. Job well done in the New Zealand camp. And I'll go to England at the end of the year chasing the number one mantle in World Rugby League. Heads in. Head in. And that's a very significant point. They can get to number one now. Having won here tonight, now the next hill for them to climb is England in the United Kingdom. They should be able to do that. This is Merrin, just on half a minute to go. Four tries, Vatabay two, Johnson one, hold the phone, it might be two. He kicks to the middle, Sean Kenny Dell pounces and scores his second try. So, so Jared Southern. Run tackle zero. Had no try. No try. Cooper Cronk has done his best here. Inside and grounding, mate. I believe it's Cooper Cronk. Yes, it is. 
Football Academic now. But they'd love to finish with the try. A full stop on the 80 minute performance. So Spider Cam and Johnson kicks. I'm okay with that. Just looking at the onside, and Sean Kenny Dow was certainly onside. What happens here? He loses the ball. That's what Jared Sutton saw. He was in a, I was about to say a perfect position, but he really wasn't. He's had a great game, Jared Sutton. He's had some tough matches this year, and he's, he's stood the test. Yep, he has. And I love the one referee, Ray. I oh, know you it. do, Gus. I love of the it. Line, scrum, boys. You yeah. tell them, son. I'm going to keep saying off. it. I love the one referee. Give a man a whistle, let him do his job. 26 to 12. Yeah. Scrum. You, you may get a kick here or something, Anthony. About to form the Kiwi supporters. They know they've won this one. They've had it won for quite some time, I suppose, in their minds. Speaking of World Cups, Ray, most of these New Zealand players out there, they'll be there in two and a half years. So Australia winning the final scrum of the game. Parker taken down just inside the 30 metre line. In fact, I think five of their World Cup team from 2000. Eight are still in this team tonight. There's the sound of New Zealand has won it. 26 and 12. In front of a crowd of around 32 and a half thousand. And Manu Vatave, the Charles Savory medalist, man of the match, voted by the Australian and New Zealand selectors. Full time. Kiwis, 26. Kangaroos 12, the Logies later tonight, but right now, the news.